So we all know some of the big names in tech poi history. Zan Moore, Alien John, Charlie Cushing. But what about Leonardo Icaza? Does the name not ring a bell? What about if I asked if you're familiar with body tracers? Or what about horizontal stacking? What if I told you that Leo Icaza had an enormous hand in either defining or outright creating these categories of poi tricks? And yet, when we talk about the big names that define the genre, I almost never hear his name come up. So how about we fix that? Drex here from Drex Factor Poi, sharing with you the love of poi spinning and flow arts to benefit your body and brain. And today, I'm doing a deep dive into the most influential poi spinner you've never heard of. But before we dive in, I just want to give a quick shout out to the friends of the channel. Big thanks to Dark Bunk, Fire Mecca, Flow Fests, Flow Toys, Juggling Calling, Pyroterra Light Toys, Spin Balls, and Ultra Poi for helping to make the videos on this channel possible. You can learn more about all these awesome companies and the work they're doing to support flow artists like yourself by checking out the links down in the description of this video. And special thanks to the non-business friend of the channel, Pekka Bekkonen. Thank you so much for supporting my channel, my work, and my mission. So first, to answer the obvious question, who exactly is Leonardo Icaza? Leo Icaza is a Mexican poi spinner who has been spinning and posting content for almost as long as I have. I first became aware of Leo when he began posting to the Facebook Tech Poi group, back when it was essentially the only poi group on the platform. I started crossing paths with him on the Fire Festival circuit, and while I enjoyed his presence, he didn't really stand out to me all that much as a poi spinner. But that changed radically in 2010. Leo went on a hot streak of placing himself in the right place at the right time to have an enormous influence over emerging categories of poi tricks, defining frameworks that are still commonly in use today. And like I've I've talked a lot about many of his contemporaries. Names like Alien John and Rona McLaughlin are certainly already enshrined in the annals of tech poi history, but how many of us actually spin like either of them? When was the last time you performed a unit circle hybrid? What's your favorite vertical stack? But if I asked you about horizontal stacking or even body tracing, I'm willing to bet you could conjure up several favorites quite easily. And you know what? You pretty much have Leo to thank for that. So how did Leo wind up having such a huge impact? And more importantly, how did he wind up a footnote in tech poi history instead of one of our most celebrated thinkers? To understand that, I want to explore exactly why I think he's so influential. Part 1. Tracing History Here's a fun secret. Several years ago, I discovered there was a magical poi term that was solid gold for search results on YouTube. If the title of your video included the words body tracer, the video was guaranteed to break a thousand views in the first 24 hours. Nowadays, body tracers are such a cornerstone of poi spinning that it's difficult to remember there was a time in the poi world before they were recognized as discrete poi moves, let alone even existed. Here's a poi history trivia question for you. Do you know who first invented body tracers? Well, in all honesty, I don't either, but I'm pretty sure I can tell you who invented the idea. Poi tricks that involve moving the hands along different lines of the body have been around for quite a while. In fact, I've long argued that tuck turns could be considered a form of body tracing, and those go back decades. And even if you were to find the first body tracer in poi history, I very much doubt the person performing it would have thought of it as such. There were countless poi moves that had body tracing characteristics that were floating around for years before they were ever considered part of the same framework. Much of the work of Yuta Imamura and Thomas Johansson would certainly be considered body tracers now, and had been around for quite some time, but it was Leo that identified that something unique and special was going on in these tricks. See, nobody had thought to put all these tricks together and apply a label to them because in many cases, they didn't seem as though they were related poi tricks at all. But Leo saw something different, and he exploded onto the scene with a video entitled Body Tracing on December 2nd, 2010, and the poi world would never be the same. He saw these tricks not in terms of the patterns the poi were creating, but in terms of the relationship the performer's hands had with their body. He likened this technique to the one from Liquid Dancing called Tracing and had a eureka moment. Hence, body tracing. 
To the best of my knowledge, nobody before Leo had applied this label to this type of poi trick. Independently, it became a huge fixture of the Russian poi spinning style, and I can remember back in 2011, Israeli poi spinner Asaf Moore referring to it pejoratively as slut tech, given the degree of contact the performer had with their body seemed to indicate throes of ecstasy. But thus far, I've yet to encounter this specific label being used before Leo coined it. But he didn't just name this type of poi trick. Leo's contributions to this field go a lot deeper. Leo dissected what made body tracers tick and came up with the idea of thinking of them as being made up of reels located in various points around the body. This gives us not just a series of exercises to drill, but also a recipe for creating brand new body tracers in the process. Again, it wasn't unusual for people to practice reels around their shoulders or waist before, and drilling reels with your hand behind your back was not infrequently seen as a stepping stone to getting down behind the back weaves. But taking that same technique and applying it to every major point of interest on the body, that was definitely something new. In fact, to this day, I still teach this as a tool for getting down and creating new body tracers. Plus which, the ability to hold down reels in each spot around the body is just a helpful skill to have. And it was something we didn't really do to this extent before Leo came onto the scene. Even if he'd just named the field of body tracing, that honestly would be enough to guarantee Leo a spot in the annals of poi history. But he wasn't finished with his hot streak just yet. And and on February 9th, 2011, he opened up a second framework of poi moves that radically changed the way that we thought about and looked at poi. Part 2. Stacking History so if I was to ask most of you about horizontal stacking, I'm willing to bet there is one name that would come to mind, Ivan Mel Gorbanov. Mel introduced the tech poi world to horizontal stacking with a short and innocuous poi pattern tucked several minutes into his seminal work, Red Pants, from July 2010. It fit in among several other patterns for being made up of a combination of stalls and pendulums and making use of a staggered stall pattern that defied common understandings of timing and direction. But the thing is, that's the one and only stacking pattern that Mel is showing off in that video. This is an entire genre of poi tricks now, so if Mel was only showing off one, where did the others come from? I'll confess that I more or less ignored that pattern when the video first came out, but a rising chorus of close friends singled it out as an object of fascination, and so I joined several online discussions centering around it. It was in one of those discussions that Leo pointed out an observation that rocked the tech poi world. See, Mel's pattern fit in among a host of his other stall and pendulum based patterns, but Leo saw something very different in it. He saw a microcosm of poi flowers and hybrids. See, one way to look at Mel's pattern is to think of it as a pair of top stalls with one book ended by a pendulum. But Leo saw something a little more complex here. He saw a two petal inspin flower that had been cut in half. And that meant that, conceivably, you could come up with similar patterns for any other type of poi flower. Wait, what? Suddenly, we were all off to the races. Leo's framework gave us all a new way to understand not just Mel's original stacking pattern, but a means of creating new ones using the same approach. I was one of many people that uploaded a video outlining a host of ideas based around Leo's framework. Before long, we were creating not just flower-based horizontal stacking patterns, but also hybrids, linear isolations, and many more. Leo's insight drove the development of an entire category of poi moves that remain alive and vital to this very day. There's some irony in the fact that Mel gets sole credit for horizontal stacks given that it was really Leo's insight that turned it into such an active pocket of the poi world. But it's also hardly the first or even last time that a particular poi move gets attached to a specific spinner for dubious reasons. And yes, I'm looking at you, Zan's Diamond. Leo himself uploaded a video of his own exploring the many directions his own insights had led him to. Leo wasn't afraid to contort his body in a variety of ways to achieve a specific pattern, and the results could vary from looking intriguing to downright painful. While we still didn't have the phrase horizontal stacking to describe this phenomenon, the framework was most definitely in place, and hosts of people for years to come, including myself, Teddy Petrosky, Charlie Cushing, Liz Knights, and countless more were all critical from Leo's notebooks as we explored these patterns for ourselves. Part 3. A Critical Reappraisal 
It's been really interesting going back through a lot of Leo's old work as I was working on this video and realizing just how much crazy stuff he had his hands in. His most popular video, Uncharted Poi, includes an entire section of intricate horizontal plane poi tricks that frankly would be considered cutting edge even if you dropped them in a video today. To say nothing of the incredible assortment of stall and pendulum based patterns that were embellishing on his horizontal stacking framework to create even wilder patterns. To me, it seems like there's some irony in the fact that we ascribe an enormous level of importance and influence to people who are big names, but whose techniques rarely find use in the modern poi world. Alien John rose to prominence with his unit circle theory, a method of categorizing a specific set of hybrids that was wildly influential on how future tech poi theorists would create families of movement. But I rarely see it in use among modern poi spinners. Like, do you even cat eye bro? Charlie Cushing likewise became a celebrity in the tech poi scene for developing 9 square theory and its successor QFT, but how many of us have used a translation recently or know our way around an 8 step cap? But body tracers and horizontal stacking? Those are staples of the modern poi scene. Those are things that damn near everybody uses. In a way, I kind of suspect that the difficulty and opaqueness of many of the tech poi giant's techniques is part of what adds to their mystique and reputation. Whereas when we talk about moves that have become commonplace, it gets a lot easier to take them for granted. And to be clear, this is not me throwing shade at Alien John, Charlie, or any of the other tech poi artists that I've mentioned in this video. It's merely to point out that as we construct our pantheon of poi names, there are absolutely a few notable omissions and we ought to work to fix that. I'll also admit that in appraising Leo's style nearly a decade and a half ago, I had a difficult time getting past his odd contortions and the awkward positions he would squeeze himself into to achieve certain poi shapes. That wasn't really what I wanted to look like as a poi spinner, so I didn't pay all that much attention. But with the benefit of hindsight, I have to say that I think Leo might just be one of the most influential poi spinners of that generation, not just because he created ideas that were hugely influential, but because you can still see his impact absolutely everywhere in the poi world to this day. Aside from Nick Woolsey, I honestly have a hard time coming up with another poi spinner whose work has so deeply saturated the poi world as to simply just be what we think of as poi in a modern context. That kind of ubiquity is really rare and pretty special. So I personally would like to thank Leo for all of his contributions and apologize for how long it took me as well as others to recognize them. Leo, you are truly a pioneer and we are all lucky to have had your contributions in this community. Part four, wrapping up. If you haven't already, I really recommend going through Leo's back catalog to see some of the stuff he was working on at the height of the tech poi boom. I'll include a link down in the description. Not only is it a really eye-opening glimpse into some of the cool stuff that was being developed at the time, but also a really fascinating time capsule of an exciting moment in poi history. Leo himself continues to upload every so often, and perhaps there's something in his recent portfolio that we'll likewise look back on in a decade or so and realize that he sowed the seeds of something we all take for granted then. But I also imagine that Leo might not be the only underappreciated poi pioneer out there. So if y'all have people you'd like to see me cover in future video essays like this one, leave me a comment with their name and why you think they deserve a reappraisal. In the meantime, please make sure to like, share, and subscribe to help other people find this video, and of course, to help my channel grow. This video would not be possible without the wonderful support of my backers on Patreon. In particular, I'd love to give a shout out to my Flow patrons who are listed on screen right here. Thank you so much for supporting my channel, my work, and my mission. And if you out there watching enjoy watching video essays diving into the lost corners of the poi world like this one, you can make sure to help me make more of them by signing up to support my work on Patreon. You can do that by heading on over to patreon.com slash drexfactorpoi. There you can get access to a whole host of awesome rewards and even better than that, support my mission to bring poi spinning and flow arts to the whole wide world. Do check that out, 
please and thank you. And if you'd like to see me do another deep dive into the career of another Poi luminary, you might enjoy this video I did on why Nick Woolsey was way more revolutionary and influential than we give him credit for. I'll link to that down in the description as well as up on screen. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure to get out and flow today, and I'll see you with a new video real soon. Take care now. Peace.